Live from New York, it's Ask Daft Punk. <laughs> Chicken nuggets. Chicken <laughs> nuggets. All right. Hold on. I got to do Daft Punkify. Okay. Let's ask an engineer. Hi. No, I, I, I know you couldn't tell who I was under the uh, mask, but um, it's me, Lady Ada. I'm the engineer. Welcome to another live edition of Ask Engineer, where you, the viewer, can see what we're doing. Ask us questions. We're broadcasting live from the Adafruit factory, downtown Manhattan. It's exciting. We shipped a lot of goods. It's 2016 and we're ready to rock. So yeah. what's on tonight's show? On tonight's show, the code is... Welcome back, everybody. 10% off all the way up till 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. Gets you 10% off for everything in the store except for... What? Gift certificates and software. So Eagle CAD and gift certificates, no discounts available. Okay. We're going to go over show and tell. People showing and sharing their projects from around the world. Packed the mailbags and stop by. Help Wanted, the Adafruit Jobs Board. Time travel, we'll look back in the world of makers, hackers, artists, engineers, and pioneers. Wearables, we've got some good videos and more. 3D, also some amazing videos and more. We've got some new products, we're gonna answer your questions. We have a top secret project, oh my gosh. We have a trivia question, all that and more on, you guessed it, Ask an Engineer. All right, let's get this thing going. Oh boy, it's been a week. Yeah. Uh, right before um, we started this, New Yorker Radio was here, and they were like doing radio there stuff. There was also yeah, they were here for the show and tell. They have the it's a, it's like a cat tail. It's, it's a, a big, cat. Yeah, a cat I always tail. want to pet the mic. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, and so they were here. So there'll be an audio broadcast later from New Yorker Radio with you talking about Adafruit and more. So that's sure. kind of cool. Um, I describe all the LED colors to them. Yeah, and so. Uh, I'm going to turn this off while we, while we continue. And uh, just to catch everyone up, if you didn't see it, we had a special New Year's Eve broadcast where Lady Ada and Tony DeCola, uh, Tony is one of the creative engineers at Adafruit. He visited New York, and we built an Adafruit IoT using Adafruit IO project from start to finish, and it made a very cool uh, little tower light, light, yeah. tower light light up and make noise based on GitHub uh Pull requests, uh, pull requests, stars, and yeah. commits and stuff, it, yeah. It was very cool, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, it's on YouTube, and you can watch it. And Yeah, we used, like, AWS Lambda, and yeah, we used, really like, Adafruit I.O., and we um, used a Feather Huzzah, so it's ESP8266, and this tower light and transistors. Those are good times. Yeah. So that is up on YouTube right now, youtube.com forward slash Adafruit. Okay. Let's uh, get into the Ooh, show. Let's kick it um, off. I, I need to say this. If you order tonight, this might be the last chance to get freebies for a bit. Uh, we did our holiday promotions. So in addition to the welcome back 10% off code, there are the freebie tiers. $100 promo proto. $150 is the trinket. $200 is UPS ground, free, continental US. And then $150 is the trinket pro. So that's going to end tomorrow. Um, I'm not really supposed to say the time is going to, but if you do limited supplies, you do your ordering tonight and get the 10% code. It's uh, it's a good deal. Okay. Same day. Uh, still doing this. Uh, it happens every day. We have people that are in New York City that this is kind of like drone delivery, except for it's via messenger. Me, yeah. Human walking drone. Yeah. So um, if you order before 11 a.m. and you're in um, parts of Manhattan, you can get it same day. Okay. Programming note: You're watching Ask an Engineer. 
That's 8 p.m. Eastern Time every Wednesday. And Show and Tell. That's every Wednesday at 7 30 p.m. We just finished that? Yeah. Desk of Lady Ada is our new series that we do, and that usually happens uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, weekends. Just uh, tune in to youtube.com forward slash Adafruit forward slash live, and you'll be able to see it. We're going to get back into those. We took also, a little bit of a New Year's break, but yeah. two or three times a week we're yeah. going to be doing projects. We're already starting to plan out what projects we're going yeah. to do. It's and it's fun. also on twitch.tv slash Adafruit mm -hmm. for now. We might, we might move it around later, but that's where it is now. Okay, the show and tell happened. I'm doing this for maybe like five years this Jeez. year. Jeez. Um, people around the world showing and sharing their projects. What projects were shared this week? Okay, so we had Aiden who had a soft robot tentacle. Yeah. We had Tony Decola who had um, an I2S amplifier that was really annoying to Carmen, who was playing all sorts of tones. So he's demoing that with the um, Arduino Zero. Uh, Noah, and Pedro, Noah and Pedro from Adafruit. Southeast had um, LED headsets that they are working on. It's a future project. I'm going to sh show maybe a video and then 3D Hangouts tomorrow. Um, Richard Alberton had a three-watt LED lamp. Um, Seth showed up but didn't have a project. Will show up next week. He's going to come back. Yeah. yeah. Do you have? A, I can't. I can't remember. I didn't write this down because I had. We the, had multiple Richards. We had the other Richard who had uh, the LED hat. Yeah. With an app that he wrote and for an IoT project, the random noise generator. The, sorry, that was another person whose name I can't remember who had the two feather wings. The, um, that was Richard. That was, sorry, that was Richard who had the uh, random number generator to, connected to Adafruit IO feed and also um, the GPS with accelerometer feather wings. That's pretty cool. And I, I saw those on Twitter, so that's kind of easy to post them on Oshpark. And then um, the person who had the LED scrolling hat. Um, with a custom Android app, so we could have like extremely long characters for uh, very long messages, and then who else did we have? We had C Scott. C uh, Scott. We also had uh, Andrew, who showed um, his uh, little, little Arduino little. bot and the camera. Yes, he yeah. had the robot, and he has falcons apparently. Yeah, we had we had journalists and audio people here recording us, so we can we remember could to write, write down, down. the um, project. So watch Show and Tell, which is on youtubecom slash Adafruit. It'll be published in just a few minutes. You can watch the whole thing. Relive the fun. It was awesome. You got all of it. Yes. Okay, good I think we did. We got, we got them all, yeah. Okay. All participants on the show and tell get an Ask Ian on the show and tell sticker. All you have to do is email support at adafruit.com and we will send you one if you were on the show and tell. Um, we have so many people coming to the show and tell each week. If you can never get on, email us. We'll work it out. We'll figure it out. See, we'll Scott had those really cool Vactrols, yeah. which is very it was fascinating. I learned something. I always love it when the show and tell teaches me something. And yeah. I learned about Vactrols, which are a nonlinear response uh, way of making a, a nonlinear responsive way of making um, a uh, adjustable resistor yeah. using an LED. It's also it's it's interesting. It uses a photo uh, an LED strapped to a photocell, so it's kind of cool. You you lost me a part of it, but I liked that you liked it. I liked it. Yeah, I Thanks. Okay. Uh, get on the show and tell. Just post a comment on the event page that we put up usually uh, by Wednesday, seven thirty, and we also put a link there so you can click it directly. All right, pack the mailbag. Reads letters. We read these to the entire company each week. This one is from Roberto. Hello, around 2012, I was afflicted with electronic situs, <laughs> uh, mostly due to the ease of entry provided by Adafruit Industries Learning System. Shortly thereafter, I was self-prompted to make tangible things as well as learn the basic of what it takes to include electronics in the apps. All right, now instead of just programming software on a computer screen, I am able to program hardware for the real world physical interactions. Whoa. Even though I missed the first two and a half years, I thank you so much for providing an individual a venue to showcase their projects via show and tell on Saturday nights. That's when we had on Saturday. Now it, the show and tell is on Wednesday. I hope to get uh, to rock out your uh, your. I hope you get to rock out on your Saturday nights with some nine inch nails or maybe even some boys don't cry from the cure. I wish you all the very best. That is true. You listen to that on weekends. I do listen. I well, I've I've tricked um, iTunes Music to. Only play um, the Cure, Autiker, and um, yeah, yeah, industrial music. So um, thank you so much, Roberto, and uh, thank you for the email. That means a lot to us. I will listen you, to some nine nails always, in your honor. You can always send um, kudos and words of support. Some days it's uh, kind of uh, challenging running a company, and uh, your emails, your kind words, uh, keep us going. So thank you. Uh, you can just email support at adafruit.com. Help wanted. We have the Adafruit Jobs Board. And this is the best place and the only place online that I know of that makers can post their skills 
and people approach them and say, those are the skills I need for the stuff I need. And then there's companies that post their jobs. And it's very specific. Skill exchange. Very specific. It's like, I need Ar Ar Arduino code help, LED code help. like all Bluetooth, low energy, yeah. like Python, yeah. all, all the stuff that So this week, this is Doc Garden looking for LED project collaborators. I'm an artist finishing up a project funded by the SF Arts Commission. I make a number of low-resolution screens with LED and fake candy. And it goes on. So from there... Um, what's oh, look, it, it, wants to, it wants to basically make the Phil B project. Yeah, what's neat is they're pointing to a, a, a tutorial from Adafruit saying, I got grant money from the SF Arts folks, and we want to make that. Are you in that area? Can you help with this? So they have budget. They have time. Um, and uh, this is a cool thing. If you're in the area, you might want to I mean, that. it's interesting. Like, that Phil B project was a massive project, but that wiring harness tutorial is really useful because, like, we got so many people who are like, I want to build, like, a gigantic LED screen. We're like... Yes, you can do that, but um, just be aware that you know you have to think about things when you're dealing with like tens of amps yeah. of current. It's not tens of amps. It's a lot. Fifty amps of current. Now you're, you know, before you know it, you're talking about real power. Okay. Um, so uh, next up, we have some videos from our um, community support team, and. Uh, so let's say I want to have an awesome <laughs> newsletter that shows up. Yeah. Every single day that teaches me tips about electronics. Yeah, so we, we launched adafruitdaily.com, and this is a place where you can go and get a newsletter, and it's not connected to a store account. We'll never spam you. It has nothing to do with adafruit.com. It's adafruitdaily.com, and we have biohacking. We have 3D printing coming up. We have daily electronic news tips. We have wearable electronics. We have maker business. Um, I can tell you, um, we'll share stats later, but it's already in the thousands and thousands of people subscribe. This was something I think people really wanted, and there just wasn't anyone willing to do it because once you give your email address and something that you want to look at every day, you just get spam forever. But will they get spam forever? They'll never get spam from us. But will they get sent all sorts of stuff that they don't want? Never. Will they get anything other than the specific thing that they signed up for? No. It'll, and we don't even say like buy Adafruit stuff. It is biohacking is about biohacking. Um, maker business is about maker business. Has uh, the last one that we posted on the maker business the news was Ramsey is not doing kits anymore. Yeah. Um, Altera was bought by Intel. Yes. Uh, uh, lots of really cool stories. All sorts of breaking news. Yeah. Okay. So let's watch a little bit video about um, how to sign up. About how to sign up. Yeah. Hey Kelly. Oh hi Gus. I'm just reading my Adafruit daily newsletters. Adafruit Daily? What's that? It's a daily newsletter I get from Adafruit. Sometimes it's a maker tip, sometimes it's a link to a great article or resource. There's different categories you can choose from, such as maker business, wearables, general electronic tips, biohacking, and more. Really? How do I do that? It's simple. Just go to adafruitdaily.com and choose which categories interest you. Next, enter your email and click sign up for Adafruit Daily and we will send you a daily email for each category you choose. Wow, that's amazing. Glad you like it, Gus. So if I start buying more wearable items, will I receive more wearable tips? No, it's completely separate from your Adafruit store account. Oh, okay. But what if I change my mind and don't want to get tips anymore? You can unsubscribe at any time. At the bottom of every daily tip is an unsubscribe button. Just click it and you're no longer subscribed to that newsletter. Neat. Wait, but I don't want to start getting a bunch of advertisements and spam. I hate spam. Don't worry, Gus. Adafruit hates spam, too. We'll never spam you. That's wonderful. Oh, but I don't want anyone else getting my email address. I'm very private. Adafruit promises to never share your information. Excellent. Do you mind if I use your computer to sign up? Sure, of course. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more customer support videos from Adafruit. Do you need me to type for you guys? That'd be great, thank you. Yay, uh, thanks okay, Kelly so and That's Adafruit Gus. Daily and I think uh, Kelly's actually in um, community support and publishing right mm -hmm. now. So that's always weird, Kelly. You're, lo you're looking at you, talking to you, talking to you. You can tweet about that on the I'm looking at you, looking at me, looking yeah. at you, telling you what a great video you did. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, thank so, you. And sign up. I've signed up for all of them, and you can also sign up for future ones that don't quite exist yet, but will exist. Yeah. One way to look at 
a lot of the things that I publish is I basically am just writing it for you. And everybody else gets to tune in. I know. So that's why it was so embarrassing when you asked me, like, hey, did you see the newsletter today? And I said, uh, no. And then I realized I wasn't subscribed to that one. And I was a little embarrassed. And um, I'm glad you didn't give me the silent treatment. You just, I went upstairs and I signed up for the newsletter. And now I get them. And, and they actually are very interesting. I really like the, the, the uh, Bedit versus um, Hello Sleep Monitor comparison. That was a cool one. Yeah. That's yeah, neat. There's technology out there. Okay. Next up, um, some news in the world of Internet of Things. Nimbus, uh, the happy cloud entity. Yeah, I'm not going to take all your data. Um, no, he's hugging it. No, he's saying that just maybe we can get along. Um, so we have Adafruit IoT, Adafruit IO in full swing. Um, we have thousands of feeds going. It is open for everyone to use right now. Go for it. It's in beta. Just keep that in mind. It's adafruit.io or io.adafruit.com. It'll get you there. You can do all sorts of stuff, and we're, we're working on it constantly. We've done tons of speed improvements, um, efficiency improvements. We're working on um, making sure we'll be able to scale, adding more blocks. Uh, please keep using it, and um, there is a GitHub issues repository. If you have issues related to the code that you can reproduce, let us know. Yeah. Uh, we are in it for the long haul. 2016 is definitely a year where Adafruit.io is going to get a lot of attention. Yep. Um, oh, someone had a question about the newsletters. They archived mm -hmm. no pla uh, any place. No, um, actually, we, we're not doing that yet. Um, it's just it's da Adafruit Daily. So the sooner you sign up, the sooner you get it. We might um, publish them somewhere later if you ever want to see it, but a lot of them are timely. So it's like, yeah, there's CNN footage from five years ago, but it's not that interesting. Yeah. Unless you're like CNN. Um, okay. But the tips maybe will have a... The tips will probably yeah. will. So we have it, so we may as well use it. Okay. Um, Adafruit learning system, 906 tutorials. Yes, 906. Yeah. So we are we are totally going to make it to 1,000 by the end of the year. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure of it. Okay. We're going to get a good pace. Okay, first one. Um, this is a, a tutorial for the little Red Rover kit that we... Um, Talked, we had the parts in the store. We've been showing off this little kit because I, I basically got it to demo the Blue Fruit Feather. But um, it's just kind of like our first robot chassis, and I actually really like it. And I don't like most robot chassis, but I like this one. And so I asked James, who's done a bunch of fun tutorials. He's um, in fab here at Adafruit to uh, build this little robot and just use Blue Fruit um, LE Connect, which is our app, to control it. And he just did a tutorial showing exactly how you wire everything up and the code, and using it, and has a little video, and it's, uh, it's super cute. OK. Next up. This is the tutorial for uh, 3D Hangouts tomorrow. This is the Bluetooth control NeoPixel headsets. And I think we're going to see the video as well, right? Are you gonna we're going to see the video very soon. But here are um, some but nice photos. Yeah, these are beautiful photos. And they made me a version with um, Adafruit logos on the side. So, I don't know if you can yeah, see it. Yeah, that's cool. And then I have to, um, I have to, it'll take me a minute, so we can maybe skip to a video and then I'll, I'll yeah. have this do something because I have to connect with Bluetooth okay. and stuff. But the other thing that I was going to show is last week we showed the tutorial for the Daft Punk helmet. Mm -hmm. So, if you want, you can also show that off now. Okay, hold on. So, what's cool about this, I think, is this is kind of the Whoa. perfect example of 3D printing and electronics. So this is Adafruit stuff, and then it's 3D printed. And Wait, can, can, can I go back to this? Because I, I got yeah. this working. I can't, I can't do two Bluetooth things. Yeah, sure. So, um, so can you, do you mind being a model, holding these up? Because so you, you have to hold them from the side. Yeah. Can you maybe see the, can the colors be seen? Oh, you know what? We should go to the overhead, because you can't really see the colors. Well, I mean, you know, you can see that it's glowing. We just yeah. have studio lighting here. I know. So. OK, well, there, you can change the colors that come off the side. Maybe yeah. like, when you go to the overhead later, I'll show them off, because it's kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean, you can look at the pictures. It's, it's pretty clear what's going on. You okay. can see that this is blue right now. But yeah, this is blue. OK, and then wait, hold on, let me change it to green. See, it's going to be green. green. Look at okay. that. Yeah, I can see Live that. demos. Live demo. Coming to an Apple store near you, I'm sure. OK, and then um, next up, this is okay. the helmet. So then the helmet. Let me turn everything on. Yeah. Put it on. My head's way too big for this, but I'll still do it anyway. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. I want one second. Okay. There you go. So you can select using the. Um, I'm using the app. To yeah. you can select different effects. 
on what you want. So this is the rainbow effect, and then you can do like the red yeah. LED effect. Yeah. Alright. So there you go. Well, um, it's hard to see. <laughs> it's going to turn off the show if I don't know if I'm careful. No, you're, well, just look ahead. Just look cool. What? So, I'm Bob, gonna, hold yeah. on. I'm going to make this do stuff. There you go. Alright. Well, and I gotta just like do this, right? Yeah, like that. Dee, 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 dee. So you can um, you can use the Bluetooth app to control what's displayed on the front, and you can also change the LED rings. And this is a pretty awesome. This is a pretty awesome LED lit up 3D printed project made with. What do you? What do you yes, those are the rings. That's correct. <laughs> you look weird. Um, okay. It does fit you. Yeah. Um, welcome back. Uh, from being a robot. Um, so yeah, this is a, a very lightweight project. I was asking them, how did they manage to make it so light? I mean, the, the previous Death Punk helmet was like, really thick. This one is only like a few millimeters thick, so it's actually, it feels like it's cast or um, vacuum formed, and they said it's, um, the 3D modeling software that they use, it just allows them to make very thin shells. And then they slice it into three pieces and it gets glued together. Yeah, let's keep moving. Okay, uh, next up, time travel. We the history. Back, we look back in the world of makers, hackers, artists, engineers, and lately pioneers and people that we've never heard about that should be in the spotlight way, way more. The first one this week, this is Kathleen Kenyon. She was an English archaeologist, and it's her birthday. Dame Kathleen Marin Kenyon um, was the leading archaeologist of the Neolithic culture for the Fertile Crescent. She is known for excavations of Jericho and Bangalore in 1952 and, and through 1958. And she's been called the most influential female archaeologist of the 20th century. That's I've cool. never heard of her. I've never heard and of her. And you know what's interesting is like there's been all these reboots of movies, and I kind of like the new Star Wars because it's a reboot and there's a lady hero in it. Yeah. I really like the idea of maybe a Jurassic Park reboot with lady archaeologists. Okay. Yeah, that'd be cool. And maybe it could be after her. Anyways, so like speaking, Indiana Jones, maybe or yeah. So, um, in the Fertile Crescent. Yeah, so speaking of, um, this just happened to hit the same week. 1925, Nellie Taylor Ross of Wyoming becomes the first female governor of the United States and the last so far. So, there's only been one female governor of Wyoming. Okay. 1925, and uh, something that you thought was cool is she ran the Mint. Yeah, she was also, um, where was, what did it say the exact? Yeah. She was in 1933, Ross became the first female director of the U.S. Mint. Which is really cool. And so she, she was hanging out with Mary O'Reilly, who was the assistant director of the Mint. That's kind of neat. Yeah, I think that she must have been so good at her jobs because there wasn't a lot of lady governors at the time. Or Mint directors. Or Mint directors. So she just must have been like 8 billion times better. Um, she, wrote a various, she wrote various women's magazines and traveled. She died in Washington, D.C. at the age of 101. At the time of her death, she was the oldest ex-governor in the United States. What a life. Cool. Okay. Next up, wearables. We've got wearables. This week, um, this is a preview of the video. This is the shoes. Okay. Let's go. Part one. Hello and welcome to another installment of Wearable Electronics here at Adafruit. Today I want to talk about super simple wireless control. Usually we use these 315 megahertz transmitters and receivers and they're really handy. You can transmit a button press up to 25 feet without line of sight. But what if you want something else besides a button press? For instance, I would like to make a pair of shoes that transmit the vibration of your foot to another circuit that would make sound or light up. Today I'm going to show you how to hack this guy open attaching a trinket microcontroller and writing a simple bit of code and trigger it with a vibration switch or any other switch you want and then turns that into this button press to trigger this module, which can then activate an audio FX board, NeoPixel LEDs, or anything else you want. It's pretty easy. Let's get started. When you open up the RF remote, you'll find that it's powered by two coin cell batteries, so it's basically a 6 volt circuit. I can use that 6 volts to power my Trinket microcontroller, and all I did was probe around the remote with a multimeter to find which contacts were power and ground. The button works by connecting two pads with a little piece of metal that collapses when you push on the button. 
To trigger the button without the little bit of metal, I soldered a bit of wire to each pad and then wired that up to a breadboard where I've got a simple transistor circuit that acts as a digital switch. So when I set my microcontroller pin high, it allows current to flow between the two wires, which bridges the contact similar to the way the piece of metal worked. By itself, the vibration switch is too much noise to trigger the RF module for long enough to activate its receiver. So I'm using a Trinket microcontroller running a very basic sketch that takes the input from the vibration switch and every time it sees a state change, it's sending a 300 millisecond long high signal to the transistor and the RF module. That way the receiver gets a very clear signal to turn on no matter what input I'm using. And you at home can easily switch out the vibration sensor for any kind of other trigger you'd like. To develop this project incrementally, I first used an LED instead of the RF transmitter just to eliminate all possible complexity. So when I flick the vibration sensor, the LED turns on. Then it's easy to switch out the LED for another wire that goes to the transistor to trigger the RF module. Next time, I'll solder up these circuits to make them more compact, and I'll put the transmitter on my shoe and wire up the receiver to an audio FX board to make sounds when you stomp or jump around. Subscribe to the Adafruit YouTube channel to catch that and many other wearable electronics episodes. And in the meantime, check out the full tutorial for this project on the Adafruit Learning System. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, okay. Becky. And don't forget, wearable electronics every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time every week. Okay, 3D printing. Zip, 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 zip. Yeah, this is our NeoPixel um, headphone project Yay. that you'll be able to now see how it's made. Um, check out 3D Hangouts tomorrow. 3 p.m. 3 p.m., but for now, watch this video. In this project, we'll show you how to upgrade a pair of headphones with Bluetooth-controlled NeoPixel LEDs using a mobile app and the Adafruit Feather 32U4 Bluefruit LE. The Adafruit Bluefruit LE Connect app for iOS or Android lets you trigger animations and change the color of the NeoPixel LED rings so you can express your style with your headphones. We're using a minimalistic pair of headphones in this project but you can use anything that has a flat style ear cup. The parts used in this project are linked in the description and they're listed in our written learning guide. You'll need a few hand tools, a soldering iron, and of course access to a 3D printer. To fit the circuit onto the headphones, we can 3D print a case with a twisty top cover to keep everything together. Once our soldering iron is heated up, we'll need to wire a ribbon cable to the NeoPixel rings. I recommend using a pair of helping third hands to hold everything in place while you solder. Next, we can connect the ribbon cable to the Adafruit Feather 32U4 Bluefruit LE. Be sure to check out the full tutorial for this project, again it's linked in the description, and follow along with the step-by-step -step guide. The components fit into the case and there's no need for any glue or mounting screws, everything just sort of snap fits together. The twisty top cover nicely screws into the case, making a secured enclosure, and it's actually pretty easy to take apart if you ever need to. Using blue mounting tack, you can mount the case to the side of the headphones and place the ribbon cable across the headband. Now we can upload the NeoPixel Picker Bluetooth sketch to the Adafruit Feather 32U4 Bluefruit LE using the Arduino IDE. We think this is a really fun DIY project that showcases how you can use 3D printing and DIY electronics to make something that you just can't get anywhere else. We hope you liked this project, and if you did, be sure to go NeoPixel on that like button. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more DIY projects from Adafruit. Okay. Okay. These I are like the little pull focusing they did, right? Great. These are awesome. Okay. So um, we actually have two more videos oh, yeah? in the world of 3D printing, so we're just going to roll right into them. Okay. This is the Ultimaker unboxing. Okay.
Okay, and then last up. Um, and this was just announced, right? I think yeah. it's CES. It was uh, under embargo until the 5th. And so we made the video and we released it. Yeah, yesterday. once they announced yeah. it. So it's okay. fir first look. I mean, they um, are the, the, we were talking about how the, the, in the maker community, they, these are the nicest, they're the, pretty much yeah. the highest precision quality of the 3D printers. I mean, yeah. the Type A is also extremely good. Like, there's pros and we, cons, but these we, are very good. We used them all. We stocked the Ultimaker. We're probably going to stock this next one. Um, it just got announced. And uh, we like it enough to do a video with it. Yeah. Um, we're picky. We're choosy. Um, lots of movement in the 3D printing world for that middle market that um, MakerBot kind of exited that's trying to get back in. Mm -hmm. New smart extruder. Um, I heard about that, yeah. yeah. And they ha they're at CES and they're trying to show that this thing is working really good. So maybe it's all going to work out. But, okay. it, but if you're going to be in the maker market, I think you got to do more than just the hardware. You have to be a cause in addition to a business. Yeah. So um, I'm hoping MakerBot gets on that one as well. Um, next up, this is... Uh, time lapse from Time Lapse Tuesday. Time Lapse Tuesday. Yeah, this was only 41 seconds. Boom. <laughs> Good. Every single week, 3 p.m. The most fashionable. All right. So, okay. Lady Ada, before we get into new products, the code is welcome back. Welcome back. And a little reminder, folks, free deals are going to end. We did it for the holidays. And That's right. The holidays you, are over. Break, get, time, break time's over. Break time's over. $99 or, or higher, you get the half size Pro and Proto. $150 or higher, you also get the Trinket 5 volt, very popular, smallest little microcontroller board. $200 free UPS ground shipping comes into the U.S. and $250 or more. You get all of the below as well as a Pro Trinket 5 volt. Yeah. Okay. So um, use the code. It'll work out. You get some free stuff. Help, Welcome back. Helps keep us in business. Okay. Um, <laughs> sure. Uh, next up, new products, Lady Ada. It's new time. No, 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 no. Starting off the year, it's going to be a little slow because we lost half of the week, but. But we gained so much more. But it's going to get real exciting real fast here. So let's just, let's just do these right. There's only three of them, but we're going to do a good job at them. Okay. This one I think is super cute. Speaking of 3D printers, this is the micro 3D printer. And the photos do not do it justice, as the phrase goes, because so we're gonna hold it, up. it is so cute. This is a little This tiny. is adorable. It's yeah. small, but it's, it's rigid. It's got um, four lead screws. So that's kind of good. It's got a belt drive system, two belts. Sorry, a belt and a, um, I can't remember the name of the, the tooth gear system. Um, it's very small, plugs yeah. into USB. Um, it's just like Here's some features pocket of it. size. It yeah, uses we'll standard filament, 1.75 millimeter. So that's good. Filaments are 3D ink. Uses the external part with any standard filament. No special cartridge required. That's a big deal yep. for people now. Compact and sleek design. You can get little um, reels that they sell that go underneath. They go into this little body here, but it doesn't. You don't have to. You can yeah. pull this out and then feed the filament in by hand. But okay. you might want to like build a little holder because otherwise the spool just sits on your desk. Yeah, the print. The base area is four point four inches by four point three, and um, the ultra fine nozzle does three hundred and fifty microns. Um, X position accuracy fifteen microns. Y position 15 microns, Z layer thickness 50 to 350 microns, movement speed up to 60 millimeters a second, prints with any 1.75 millimeter filament, designed to use PLA 3D ink and ABS Expert 3D ink. That's their. What setup. I kind of like is this is, it's, you know, it's so simple, and I can tell that it took a lot of effort to make it this simple. Like, there's just not a lot going on here. Like, yeah. it's, it's just a cube, it doesn't print very large things, but I think for people who want to just get started, this is um, a really good alternative to the simple metal. I mean, the simple metal yeah. is much more hackable, but um, this is pretty neat. It's super cool. So we decided to carry these. Uh, everybody try these out. It's like a little tiny printer, little printer. You could also re-spool your filament on there if you want to just like yeah, use one cool. color. 
So Anyways. we decided to carry this little printer. Yeah. It's very cute. Comes with a little five volt, four amp power supply. Yep. USB cable. Yep. Okay. All right, so next up. Okay. Speaking of super cute stuff, here's that robot you showed off. Yes, this is a little rover kit. So we had all the comp individual components in the store, but we didn't have time to make a kit out of them. So now we have a kit available. So the kit is just the metal body, the wheels, the motors, and then a little topper. You don't get the electronics or the batteries or the battery holder. That's because you'll probably want to pick your own batteries and battery, like, you know, whatever you're powering it with or controlling it with, whether it's a Raspberry Pi, an Arduino, um, a feather board, a, a Teensy or whatever, you're gonna decide what you wanna use. So this is just the basics. Um, you get the little rover and we have the tutorial that goes with it that shows how to make a Bluetooth low energy controlled robot using our Bluetooth app and the, the Blue Fruit Feather. Um, it's a very simple little robot, fun to play with. You can build it either as a two wheel or four wheel robot. This kit just has two wheel, but then you can upgrade it later if you like. So a lot, okay. of, lots, a lot of possibilities. It's kind of our first little robot rover kit. I think that this is a very good chassis. It's not too big, fairly light, very adaptable. And next up tonight, the star of the show, besides you, is one of my favorite new products. Yay! New Pixel Featherwing. I'm trying to keep up with my once a week feather yeah. or feather wing. And I wanna keep I wanna keep this uh, this party fresh and I think the people yeah. who have feathers and feather wings wanna see new products come out all the time. So this is a Neo Pixel Feather Wing. I'll show it on the overhead also, but what's neat is it uses uh, super teeny NeoPixel compatibles. These are 3.5 millimeter by 3.5 millimeter size LEDs. And so originally I designed this to be, I think three by six uh, NeoPixels, but then I saw these, the teeny ones and I was like, wow, I can basically have like twice as many um, because they're you know, half the size. So I made it instead of um, 18, it's now 32 mm. uh, pixels worth. So that's kind of fun. Um, it's got a, a power selector, so you can power either from USB or from a battery. It will just automatically select which power is higher. And it has a logic level up shifter, so the 3.3 volt logic is level shifted up, so you know that it's going to be definitely good to control these or other NeoPixels. Okay. Works with any of the feathers, and you can, con con Let's go you can select which... Um, oh, can you zoom in a bit? Yeah. Thank you. You can do all that. I know you can zoom. You can do that. Um, so yeah, you got four by eight LEDs, um, they're RGB, they're super bright. Um, you just plug them onto the feather and then um, it also comes with a reset button. So I just reset it, so it'll start up again. Go through the bootloader first. Uh, this is on a 32U4, but it works with the ESP8266, uh, the M0, um, whatever feather shaped item. And then on the bottom, let me get this off. Um, there's a jumper for one of the pins. This pin is jumpered, but you can cut it and then solder close any of these solder jumpers. So you can select any IO pin you want for controlling these pixels. So I think this would be a fun way to, you know, you, you connect it with, um, you know, Adafruit IO or your, your sensors and you can have some basic graphs or LEDs um, indicator. I mean, it's not big enough for text scrolling, um, it's only four pixels high. You kind of want six pixels high for um, text characters, but I couldn't quite squeeze them in. So I think if you want color, though, I think this is still kind of fun. Okay. Um, and with that, Lady Ada. That's. That is new products. New products. New, new, new. New, new, okay. new, new. All right, we're finished. we got to get out of here a little earlier tonight, yeah. but I think we're going to still have time for a few more things. Um, Let's remind everyone of the discount code. Oh. It's uh, welcome back. 10% off everything but gift certificates and software. Yeah. If it's in the store, you can get 10% off. In case anyone was wondering, things still haven't changed. We still don't have any loans, no venture capital. Um, Wouldn't it be funny if like over the holidays, like everything changed? Lady Ada sold it. Um, no. Not opposed to it if we need to do that one day or wanted to do more things for our, our customers and community. But right now, um, we're just focusing on all of you. So if you want, use the code. And that's what actually pays the bills. Help support yeah. us. So if you like open source hardware, you like lady engineer companies, um, this is, uh, it's kind of up to all of us. So <laughs> um, let's do, um, we have a special treat. 
Not out yet. Don't ask. Okay, so you have a secret top secret thing you're working on. Well, it's not really top secret. And I, and I took a I mean, photo, it's kind of top secret. And I took a photo, and it looks like some little wireless board. What is this? Yeah, I, I don't think we got to talk about this, so I wanted to, to bring it up. It's the, the ESP32 beta module that we got. Everybody at CES is talking about this. I don't know if you know CES is going on. Everybody, it was in news. It was not. It was all over the news. I don't really <laughs> keep track. I was really busy today, so you're, you're messing no. with me. No, basically CES is the sharper image catalog come to life now. I know. The, all the feedback they is... They don't care about All the feedback sets. is... It's a bunch of stuff that no one wants or needs. Okay, anyways. So this is the big news. We got this module a couple weeks ago, and we actually did a live cast of putting it together and getting the tool chain up and running. It's um, the upgrade to the ASP8266. Um, we only have one of these, uh, but and it's also the engineering sample. It's the engineering sample of the chip is the ESP31, so it's not even like the final, final chip, although it's probably not going to change too much. Um, I think it's interesting. It's it's very fast. What's well, nice is it has dual core, and so instead of having to share the ESP processing on the same chip, which kind of led to like very uh, stuttery um, uh, 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 data transfer, because you you would transfer some data and then you'd want to do some stuff, and then it would get inter you know it, basically you couldn't really do both things at once. You can do processing of data and uh, it peripherals and then also um, Wi-Fi at the same time, but now that's split into two cores, and so the Wi-Fi stuff happens, and then you can you do all your processing and, and analog and digital conversion and, and audio output and whatever. Uh, also has a ton more pins, has more peripherals, and it has uh, I2C, SPI, analog digital converter. It might even have a DAC for all that I, I don't remember, but probably. Um, it runs at 160 megahertz. Uh, it, it wasn't too bad to get the tool chain up and running, and I basically just did a twiddle check where I just did GPIO high and low, and it never, it, there's no interrupts, so that's kind of nice. So it's definitely going to be good for if you want to do projects that have time-specific requirements, like NeoPixels or servos. That stuff was very, very hard to do with the ESP8266. Much easier to do with the 32 because you basically have the core all to yourself. Okay. Good work. And we'll report more as we learn more. I mean, this is it's very fresh. Okay. That's a big deal. Yeah. All right, so maybe we'll shout on Desk Data and stuff later. We'll do more. I want to do more projects. I basically got it up and running, and then I got the tool chain working, and then I did a tool chain port. So now the tool chain I have working under Windows, so now I can actually write more code for it. OK. All right, and with that. You want to do some questions? Yeah, top secret, yeah. yeah. Start posting your questions in the Twitch chat. In the YouTube stream, chat, in the YouTube. Yeah, we have a couple minutes. We can do. We can do a couple minutes. Of yeah, we're gonna do some questions. Questions. Can I? Can I the water? Yeah, uh, here's some water. Dehydrated. Yeah. Hydration. Um, and then there was a special interview that the New Yorker Radio did with you. Once that's up, we'll post up that. They kind of tagged along with you for part of the day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how does someone get started with Adafruit IO? That's a great question. If you would like to sign up for Adafruit IO, first off, you need an Adafruit account. So sign up with your Adafruit account, and then you can go to I.O. and there's a sign up thingy, which I may have changed, so I don't want to promise exactly how you sign up. But basically, you go there, and you can sign up, and it will approve you. And then you're going to get your Adafruit I.O. key. And then depending on how you want to connect to Adafruit I.O., uh, there's different ways to go about it. If you want to just use your computer and just like send and receive data from your computer, we have, I think, examples for Node and Python. So you can use um, your desktop computer over a Raspberry Pi. If you want a, a standalone device, uh, you probably want to pick up our um, Huzzah kit, which has an ESP8266 Wi-Fi module feather and a bunch of sensors and stuff. And then we have a couple example projects for like, you know, a door opens, send me email, or um, you know, when I press a button, I change the color of an LED. So we have a couple different demos to get started with that. But once you get the hang of it, basically, you know, you just have to learn about how to push to feeds and pull from feeds, and then what you do with that data is totally up to you. I mean, you're just, it, it, it was basically like a, a little pipe for data coming in and out. And then we have also tutorials on using things like If This and That or Zapier to uh, add capabilities for like, oh, I want to tie in my Gmail account or Google Calendar or weather reports or stock or you know news or Twitter, or all that good stuff. Okay. Um, and the next question, I can answer this one. Someone know had we made a video tour of some of our production facilities, and the answer is yes. We actually have the CTO 
of the United States, Megan Smith, and then the they director video of, tour, yeah. of advanced manufacturing, uh, Megan Brewster, um, come out, and we did a tour there. So just search for Megan Smith Adafruit. CTO, and, yeah. Yeah, CTO of the United States. Ain't no higher. Did we post on the Adafruit YouTube channel? Yeah. Okay, so ch yeah. check out that. YouTube.com yeah. slash Adafruit and search for it there. Yeah. Um, next up. Can the N NRF 24L01 Plus communicate with other wireless types of modules? It can communicate with stuff over 2.4 gigahertz. However, I, you know, anything more complicated than just simple packets will be difficult. I think somebody once got it to basically act like a Bluetooth beacon by just hard coding it. Um, but it's pretty much, and I think it can do 802, 15.4-ish type stuff, but it's not, even though it does 2.4 gigahertz, it doesn't, it's not like it's going to be able to communicate with Wi-Fi. Okay. There's a limit to what protocols it's going to be able to do. Okay, um, this one, um, I'm going to skip around a little bit. Um, is there going to be a Featherwing clock coming soon need for data logging? Can you use data logger? Um, no, they want a real-time clock. Oh, yes, yeah. there's a, there's a real-time Featherwing. Right. Um, there's two that are coming out. One will have a, a DS3231, a uh, very high-precision real-time clock, and one that will have a, a PCF8523 or something, which is a less precise but uh, more affordable real-time clock. Okay. Um, next uh, question. Can <laughs> I make an OTG unpowered hub adapter by cutting a USB mini cable and a USB hub and matching the connector cables? Plus data, plus data. Yes, data you plus. can. You probably want a USB micro cable. But yeah, if you just if you cut the wires, the... You know, red is, is power, then uh, you have D minus and D plus, which are uh, green and white. I don't know which order. And then black, which is ground, you'll just want to splice those in, but you can do it. Okay, I think this might be the same person, but maybe the same person, I don't know. Uh, do you have any offer, you plan on any offering products that use the NRF 21L01 plus 2.4 gigahertz transceiver? We don't have any plans offhand for 24L01. Uh, I am looking at the SAM DR, which is, um, a Cortex M0 Plus SAMD processor, which is used in the Feather M0, but also tosses in a 2.4 gigahertz radio. And the reason I kind of like that is it's all in one, and um, it has more, I think it has uh, more cohesiveness because the processor is built in. But I'm not against 2.4 gigahertz. I, I want to do more radio stuff this year. Yeah. So I might do some 900 megahertz stuff, maybe get some 2.4. I just haven't done radio. Do we have any mileage on the Arduino 101? I think we have those on order, right? Didn't we we have them on order, but I have not even used yeah. one. I have no idea. I got some pull requests for the NeoPixel library, so somebody's using it. Yeah. Um, next up, uh, I can answer this one. What's the best way to contact you for tipping about new things? Um, so just go to adafruit.com slash contact and just use the contact yep, form. Yep, we have um, We have all the different categories, and it usually routes to the right place. Um, next up, I'm completely new to... Um, you guys company and the world of electronics so it's all fascinating any advice and guidance on getting started with learning I have some advice but I know you have some advice yeah go for it so my first one is definitely play with processing no matter what because you learn computer programming and that trans that knowledge transfers really well to Arduino mm -hmm. and then after that something like the make electronics book and doing some Arduino stuff will determine like at your interest level you get LEDs blinking there's all this code all these libraries and then later on stuff like Raspberry Pi and so forth but that's my first suggestion what do you think? You're the expert. I agree. I think, I think you know, we have a lot of very basic starter kits that don't even require soldering. Um, like a floor Gemma starter kit, you, you can just use alligator clips for some stuff. Um, or an Artix kit, you can do everything on a breadboard and, and just like look for a project on Learn that you want to build. Um, maybe go for an easier one to start and then uh, just try to build it. Okay. Uh, any plans to sell a kit uh, for LED puppets like the ones that appear in your video? We don't have an LED puppet kit. Those were made by a person who, um, she makes puppets for a living, and um, she's very, very good at them. Yeah. So I think maybe we'll have something to show, like, how to do it. It might be something where, you know, we make a stuffed version, but they're actually, it's very hard to felt, yeah. um, those puppets. So I think, you know, DIY, you know, we have the, um, the stuffed LEDs in the store. Yeah. You could use those and you could adapt those to make t little puppets. Yeah. Okay. Um, next up, what's your favorite reference books for electronics besides Art of Electronics, which you have a quote on the cover, so, you know, you got, that one would be for sure. Signals and Systems by Carew is just a great Signals and Systems book. Okay. Um, you know, there's Understanding Analog Electronics. 
I like Charles Platt's books for make. Charles Platt's books are yeah. really good. Um, the Inventor series. I'm, it's, I, the thing is, I actually haven't referred to them. I, you know, because I look at data sheets online, so I yeah. haven't. Um, the Robert Pease books are always really good because it's that stuff I don't know. And then, you know, the, for the stuff I don't know where I have to go to books, is like ARL, because it's, you know, you're, you're designing antennas or you're like, I don't know. I, I didn't take any of the RF. Like again, I don't, don't do a lot of radio. I didn't take any RF classes. And so whenever I'm stuck with like, okay, I don't understand how you calculate the gain for this RF circuit, um, ARL uh, okay. reference books are, are really, really good. I'm going to answer one question, and you're going to do one. Are you guys getting more Pi Zeros in stock? Yes, yes. sign up. You'll get an email. Um, next up, how can I best supply more than two amps of the Dot Star 144 LED meter strip for a light paint project for one meter? Um, the best thing to do is to get a really, really good 5 volt power supply. I mean, you have to have a, a lot of current. Um, the the Dot Star painter reduces the the basically what to, to be able to, to paint. To two meters of that strip, you have to reduce the brightness of the image because otherwise you, you will, it'll actually get um, weird effects. For one meter, though, I think you can use um, one of our really big five volt USB power packs. It has a two amp output, but you can actually get like three amps out. We also have uh, UBEX, um, UBECs, and we have one that can do five volts, three amps. So plug that into a 12 volt power supply, like eight AA batteries. And then we'll step that 12 volts down to 5 volts and then give you a good 3 amp output. So that's a, that's a good way to get 3 amps regulated current. Okay, um, a little bit of speed around. Oh, someone mentioned the Forest Men books. Those are really good. Forest Men are also, also really Star good. Simpson's doing some cool stuff with um, them. Uh, starting an open source community tech workshop in uh, British Columbia, Canada, offering the use of the space and tools by donation. Any general tips or thoughts on such endeavor? Yes, go to our Making a Hacker Space article series. We have a tutorial series. On learn.adafruit.com. It's a 10 part series yeah. all about. How you're going to have meetings okay. on Tuesdays. Someone said, um, I'm, I like 3D printing. Do you have any 3D printers? Yeah, check out our 3D printer. Look what I got one of That's a cute one. Look how it's like the size. It's smaller than my head. Which your my head. head's really big. So. You want to put a 3D printer in your head? No, it's just it's kind of neat. You can just bring this to like a restaurant. We could do. We could probably do a little portable power pack. Mm -hmm. for this. Oh, yeah. 5 volt, 3 amp. I yeah. mean, like, we would do that same thing. We'd get a U-back and a yeah. couple eight delay batteries. We have okay. to, you have to power it from a laptop. I mean, you have to plug into a laptop to, yeah. um, to do stuff with it. Okay, folks. Okay. That's, those are the questions. So let's do some trivia. Giveaway. All right. Wait, what are the rules? Rules are if you've won anything before, you can't win again. Only one winner per my lifetime. So if you've already won something, sit on your hands. And it's not like, oh, I won once on Twitch and I won once on YouTube. No, you only won win one winner per my lifetime on this show. So you know what I mean. And uh, please let other people uh, enter and win, so don't give them hints. We want everyone to have a fair shot. The prize today is a little Red Rover kit. Yeah. Red Rover, Red Rover. Okay. I'm Bluetoothing right over. Um, who was the first um, woman governor in the U.S.? If you were watching the show earlier, you would have saw that in our time travel segment. What's her name? The what first. Is her name? It's, every, it's easily Google. Woman governor. It's not 42. I like that someone always guesses 42 is the answer. Cause that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. One day it might be true. Looks like. Nope, that's not right. Uh, it's. Uh, no, you got to spell it right. Well, no, I'm going to go with. No, uh, I, this, is, this is correct. This the is first, correct. That's the first one? Yeah. What about that one right there? Nope. You, like the, you care about the spelling. Spelling counts. OK, Curtis Beef and Curtis Twitch. Beef. Congratulations. You're Curtis the winner. Twitch. Curtis because it's Taylor, not Taylor. Yeah, okay. So were they paying attention? Okay, look, whatever Lady say, Lady Ada says goes, and yeah. uh, there's no... Curtis Beef, you've got beef, and that beef has made you correct. Yeah. Or maybe and, not. And what, do you, and, and what did Curtis Beef win? He wins the little red rover robot kit. Okay, great. It's and the, the new PID product. And the PID is uh, 2939. If you tell support that you won PID 2939, they'll really like that. You just have to supply your own Arduino and motor driver, but hopefully you have that stuff kicking around. Yeah. Otherwise, we, you could maybe find some, buy some or something. There, I don't know. There's always next week. Don't worry. Um, everyone eventually wins here. Good job, Curtis Beef. Yeah. I'm going to wear this helmet. Okay, that's the show for tonight. Thank you, everyone, for making the first show of the year fantastic. Stay safe. Be good to each other. Chicken nuggets. Yeah. Chicken nuggets. And, uh... Do you want to turn on the front? Do you want to do anything? Like yeah, that? I got it. Hold okay, on. That's really tough. Yeah, it's these are not designed for. iPads aren't designed to be used with helmets. Yeah, it's all tough. 
There you go. All right. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, we'll see you next week, Wednesday, 8 p.m. And uh, don't forget the code is welcome back. 10% off all the way up till 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time, thank you so much for all your support. Thank you to all of the Adafruit team members that have helped out and all the community members and everyone who makes us really excited about Wednesday nights. Thank you. Rainbow. Here's a picture of a cat. Bye. And here is your moment of Zeno.